It's a 1954 Lincoln uh, Cosmopolitan, which was the, the, the top of the range was the Capri, uh, but the, the next one was the Cosmopolitan. And the, the Cosmopolitan theoretically could have been the light work racing version because there's no, um, there's no electric windows or uh, things like that. Um, so it's, the, it's the, base, the base body style. But I've had it since 1991. Uh, I bought it to do uh, La Carrera Panamericana. They, they re-ran the event in, um, started re-running the event in 1989 as a sort of retro event. The original event ran from uh, 49 to 54, and the 54 Lincoln that this is, they were the winningest car. It, it just evokes that period so well. And um, when I came to livery the car, I, I wanted it to look like one of the works cars that ran in period. So I did the retro event in 91. We drove the car to the start in the south of Mexico and raced it back. There were 116 cars entered that year in 91 and we finished 57. So we were we thought just finishing was good enough. So um, and then I had it in America. I left it in America with friends up until 2000, and then I brought it back here to the or brought it here to the UK in 2000. And we've been very lucky. We were able to do the revival with it in 2002. 2004 and the last time it was here was 2006 so 16 years later we're we're back <laughs> We haven't done any testing, um, we, we're completely green to it, so, uh, but they haven't changed anything, so the corners are in the right order, so as long as I remember that, we'll be fine. Goal is to find somebody to play with. If we can find somebody to play with, then that's, that's fantastic. There's a, there's a little Renault 4CV I've seen run at Le Mans Classic that I've got my eye on. Um, but uh, yeah, as long as we get to play with somebody, fantastic. It's a V8, it's a 317 cubic inch V8, which is about 5.2 litres. Um, it has a four speed, high dramatic, automatic transmission. It's pretty gutless out of the corners, so the, the, the idea is to try and keep as much momentum going as possible, which when you're doing over 100 miles an hour down the Levant Strait, it's quite, quite hard to tell yourself, no, you've got to carry momentum, you've got to carry momentum, keep your foot off the brakes. So it's automatic. Those brakes are actually drums all round. You've got a great big old steering wheel. It's, it's not power assisted and the brakes aren't power assisted either. It's, um, so it's, it's quite heavy on the old steering, um, but with the Dunlop racing tyres, that, that sort of lightens it up a bit. You can, um, you, you almost feel them sort of skittling across the, uh, across the tarmac. It's, uh, it, from outside, it gives the impression that it's floating, but it's a, it, it's a little bit like a swan um, in as much as it looks quite serene from outside, but there's, there's lots of furious pedaling going on below the water lines. It was great, really good. It was just lovely to be back out there. Um, I got suckered uh, on the opening tour because there were two, two cars going slower than me and um, that made me feel very racy. But um, it was, that, I got over that fairly quickly. Um, and they came past me again later, but um, yeah, no, it's terrific. Really good, really, really lovely to be back out there. The fact that I've had it 30 odd years is, um, is fantastic. It's, this sounds corny because we used it last October, but it's a much loved car. Um, 
I've had lots of adventures in it. I mean, that, that 10 years that I had it in America, I did two Trans-American journeys in it. Um, I raced it to, at circuits I never dreamt of being able to drive it around. It's actually lovely not having run the car here for such a long time because there's a whole new audience for it. You know, a whole, a whole new load of people who haven't seen it week in, week out. So that's terrific.